everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia. I herald from the base of the Rocky Mountains in southern Alberta, Canada, and I love to crochet. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is the kind of video that you like, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below so that you can get notified when I post another episode. I usually upload on Wednesdays, usually about one o'clock mountain time. Stay tuned. How are you all doing today? I hope you are doing well. You might be able to hear, now that I'm like talking loud, I don't really hear it, but earlier today, definitely, I heard the nasaliness of my voice and I have caught another cold. So I feel like being away from people for two years has really, really dampened my resistance to many germs. Either that or I'm not as stressed out as I was. Um, I've been doing a lot of reading lately about stress in the body and how all of that sort of interacts with each other. And I always kind of joke around that I maintain a low, a low grade stress level and that makes me disease resistant, but it turns out that's actually kind of true. So I must have relaxed some in the past, well, it'd be a month now, more than a month. I have been fighting with chest things and nose things and head things and all, all of that for a while, but this is not why you guys stopped in, is it? Sorry. Given that it is Wednesday, we are going to start off with what I am working on, my works in progress for this Wednesday. You guys. Okay. Do you remember I was making a sweater for my friend and where did I show you? I was right here. I put a stitch marker. Aha. That's smart. So I finished the front panel and I just need to show it to you. Hopefully it's all in It looks a little bit weird. Yes. This is the first time I have done any sort of intricate um, color work whatsoever. So that being said, there are some things I would redo next time, but overall I am very happy with how this has turned out. And I will be adding, I'm gonna add some eyes on the bees cause they look a little bit weird cause you can't tell which direction that they're going. But that being said, I think it turned out really, really, really good. I love it. I kind of want to keep it for myself, but I'm not going to cause that's selfish. I'm going to show you how the back is. So this is where I had to add a new ball, but the back actually ended up staying really tidy. And I think it looks great. Although I'm looking at this now and it like wowed out and then it went back. So I'm not too sure what I was doing. That's something that will come out in the wash, right? So I'm done. I've done that. I've done the front panel. So yes, this is the front of the sweater. And then I have started on the back. I started this. I just started this last night. That I finished up last night. I did probably five rows to get it all done. And then I started on, this is the back panel, back of the sweater. So it's the same thing. I'm making this part a little bit longer. So this is definitely gonna cover the butt and then um, it's gonna have like an open, it'll be not, so the, okay. This part here, this ribbed part will be a little bit higher in the front, in the front of the shirt and it'll be a little bit lower in the back. So there'll be, it's like a gap like this, but it'll, it'll look like this when it's hanging on a hanger, but no one's really gonna notice when you're wearing it. So there's loads of shirts that are like that. That's like a very, very small mullet, I guess. I guess you call that, I don't know. So I have to finish this back panel up and I'm not adding any designs. It's just gonna be blue all the way up. And then I am working on the sleeves and those are going to be top down. Um, so it's going to be similar to this, but I'll be starting. So I'll sew up the sides up to the part where I want to put the armpit in and then uh, leave the hole. So it's sort of like a pinny. And then I will make the arm hole or the arm and then it's done. It can go to its new home. So I think it's going very well. This color that I'm using is called, it's either cal called Cascade or it's called Waterfall. This is, I had to purchase this and it is um, Homespun Yarn by Lion Brand. That is, that is the blue that we're using. I have another ball of that. So I have a second one to finish up. Hopefully there's enough in there, but if not, I'll be back at my house. And this is the green that I'm using. This was the gifted one. I do feel like this scheme is different, or is bigger than this one. And I don't have the paper for this one to actually check, but I mean, whatever, like this is years and years old. So we just gotta do what you gotta do, right? And I also now have a ton of yarn, but luckily I have a project for it, which I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's something that's super ridiculous, but I'm going to show you guys when it's finished. It's not a work in progress to show anybody. It's not started yet or anything. So don't worry about that. That is my sweater for my friend. This might be the last time though that I show you it until it's finished because I do want the finished product to be a surprise for her. So I'm hoping that I can put it together, take some video, 
not post it until it's finished and then give it to her and then have everything all sequenced properly in that banner. Um, for that yarn I have been using, this is my Susan Bates hook. It is a six and a half millimeter, um, a K, and then it says a 10.5. So this, yeah, I like, I like these pointy headed ones. Hopefully this is showing up for you. It's my favorite. I really like this one. The next thing I have been working on is, a, I've left a mess up here for you. I feel like this is, this is basically what everything looks like all the time around here these days is when I'm working on projects, uh, I just sort of put them, I put them where I can vacuum and it's not going to get sucked up in the vacuum cleaner because I have made that mistake. Actually with the duvet cover, I sucked up some of the yarn. Oh, I was so upset. And it, it went around the beater brush of the, of the vacuum and then it pulled a ton of it out. And oh man, I was so angry with myself. Anyway, this is up so it doesn't get vacuumed up. I am still working on, I've made excellent progress in my opinion, on my wrap. I think I just pulled out a stitch now. So is this not just so lovely? I mean, I can't even, it is, to me, this is the perfect summertime wrap. Like this is going to be, these, this is gonna be phenomenal. I can't wait to wear it. I really, I don't have anything, I don't have anything really to say. I just, I want to show this off. I got the pattern from a shawl. Oh gosh, where was it? It was on Pinterest. It was just like this really, really basic um, chart that someone had made and it works really great. So I like it. One thing I will say, I want to talk about this yarn. So it is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. The transitions are horrific and I'm not sure if, okay, so I'm not sure if this yarn is intended like you're supposed to cut the, the transition out or not because it has, let's see if I can find one on here somewhere. Try and chat while I'm looking. Um, is this one? There's one here, but I can't really show you because it's all covered up. But it's... Uh, it is really hard and it's crusty and you can see threads of plastic in it. So I'm not sure if this was designed to be cut apart. Oh, here's one right here. Hopefully, I don't know if this is going to focus. So this is a transition right here. So it's very, very abrupt. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show you this here. Let's try and... I really hope that this focuses for you, but it's got these little, these little threads there. I'm not, again, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this or not, um, but they are very, very hard plastic and you can see when the two colors are put together that there is, are these very plastic fibers and it's really, it is twisted together, but it feels almost glued. It's very, very hard. It's not very soft um, and it's just, it's so noticeable and I really, I don't care for that. But the, the reason I'm bringing it up is, and I was saying before, is I don't know if in the pattern... Cause I didn't read the pattern obviously on this ball. Maybe I can take it off. Um, oh, there are no instructions on here figures. Um, so it's, this is the sleeve from the yarn. It's this. And then it has on the back. If you go to that URL, I'll put it in the description box below. So we, you guys can check it out yourself. Um, it's supposed to make that, which is it, it, okay. Like I can see that, but are you supposed to cut the yarn apart and then go back to the top to create that effect? Or do you just keep going? Because with crocheting, with this, I've been keeping going and then I find these transitions and ugh, I just don't, don't like them. Uh, but at this point, because I'm over halfway done the ball, I'm not going to bother cutting it out and then tying them back together. I'm just, I'm just going to go with it. And again, because this is my own personal piece, I, I am much more flexible and lenient about how things work than I am if I'm making this for somebody. So if I was making this for somebody, absolutely, without a doubt, I would be cutting the transitions out and just knotting it myself with those, the two knots that when you pull it like that, they go tight together. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm not, I'm not worried about that right now. One of my favorite parts of this is it's a, it's not a shell stitch, but it's like shell adjacent and it is this here. So you do, it's actually sort of like a granny stripe. So you cluster five double crochets together and you don't chain and then you uh, put a double crochet in two stitches and then you come back, but you do the opposite. And I think 
this has just it has worked out so beautifully so you put your three here to add your space hopefully you can see and then it's like the opposite cluster so they all have the same top but it has five legs whereas the other one the cluster is it has the same bottom and five tops but i just i absolutely love 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 how this has worked out it just looks it's so pretty and it's worked out really really nicely and i just yeah i love this pattern this is one i I'm definitely going to keep in my repertoire to um, provide for people if they want me to make them something like this, just because it's turned out so nicely. And with this weight of yarn, which is, of course I threw it on the floor. It's 200 grams, 800 meters. That's not really helpful. Mm, this is almost like the, it's a wrap yarn that I was using on that um, cocoon cardigan thingy that I had made. It's very similar to that. And I, I want to say that that's a two. What, what is that? Sport weight? Fingering maybe? It's not lace weight. Um, but it's very similar to that. So that being said, it drapes really nicely. And I feel like you can get way more seasonal use out of this weight of yarn than you can with a thicker yarn because of that. So um, I do have... My very most favorite one that I made with that beautiful yarn, I'm pretty sure that was a two, the purple and orange one. But I have another one that's a three, and it's like, um, oh gosh, what brand is it? It's the Unforgettable Yarn, which I'm pretty sure is Red Heart. It's beautiful. I absolutely love that yarn. Love it so much. It's just it's perfect. Perfect for any project. I would make anything with it, honestly. Um, so I've made that, and it's a little bit thicker, and that one I can only... I can only wear the thicker ones in the winter. There's no way that I could just like kind of throw this on in the summer because I'd be sweating so much. Even out hiking, if I was just wearing it like this, the thicker ones, um, it's just, it's way too hot even like this, even with like basically my whole back exposed. So um, I do feel like these these thinner um, cotton ones or cotton acrylic blend ones, these, these lighter weight yarns, they just lend themselves to more use. So I can wear this as a cover up at the beach, which is what I was intending to do with this all along. Um, so, you know, you can wear it around your waist and it ties really nicely because the ends are not super bulky. So regardless of the size of these at the end um, of the project, they're always going to be like this. So it like it does like a nice little knot and it stays because the cotton is just like um, a tiny bit rough is not the right word, but the fibers are more pronounced I guess and it, it just holds itself better when you tie it um and then also if I wanted to wear this in the winter which I totally could um you put it on and remember this is gonna be like twice this size but you can put it up and then once it gets sort of all tucked up in here nicely um it will it's it will keep you warm and it'll keep the wind out um I does that doesn't mean I'm never going to make a thicker um sport weight or D, maybe it's DK I don't know I, I really I don't know like because I don't I've never talked like that. I've always used the numbers, so I don't know what those actually mean. Um, not exactly. Like, I know fingering, I think fingering is above sport. Yeah, see, like, the, I don't have the chart, like, in my head yet. So, um, I know lace weight is zero or a one. And then super bulky is, is seven. But I don't know if what that's called. Like, does that one have a name? Anyway, uh, worsted weight is, like, usually where I go. So, I would say, like, worsted weight... I would still definitely use those, but the season for them is so much shorter. Um, plus, you could even use this one for hiking, I think, if you when you're wearing a backpack. Um, yeah, as long as you're not somewhere super, super sunny, I would say, because it's not going to provide, this one's not going to provide a lot of uh, protection from the sun. But if you're in the forest, then it's not really going to matter. And yes, like I know these holes are big and mosquitoes can absolutely get through there. But um, while you're walking and it's moving, it kind of deters animals animals insects from landing on you too much which if you live in horsefly territory like i do is a blessing because horsefly bites are not a joke that got off on a tangent didn't it Ugh, you have to forgive me i just took a sip of tea and it is scalding hot and i thought it was much cooler than it was so my mouth is really hurting now <laughs> again that's i do that often you think i'd learn but i don't um i unfortunately i have nothing that is finished right now I have not worked on my duvet cover. I haven't worked on the granny square card again, although I am very grateful for all of the suggestions that did come in. Um, and 
why people chose what they did. So I really appreciate if you have said anything and I have made a decision, but I will finish it up and then I will reveal it after so that everybody else will know. But yeah, I have nothing, nothing at all finished to show you. And you know what? I don't even really feel that bad about it, to be perfectly honest. I know, I know, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. Um, what else? Oh, my yarn store was having its birthday last weekend. So of course I went because I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So they had some yarn on sale and I entered a draw and I want a pom-pom making kit, but I haven't gone and picked it up yet. So I still have to do that. But I picked up these three balls here. Um, this one was 50% off. It is absolutely beautiful. This is the label. And it is 100 grams and 220 meters. So it's not that long. And I don't know what to make with it, but I thought it was beautiful. And then there was only one that looked like this. All of the colors looked, this, they looked all different. Um, but I looked at the color number and the lot number and those were all the same. So I don't, I was a bit confused as to why that was. And I was looking all over to try to figure out if I had missed something else, if it had perhaps said um, a, a different color number or something someplace else. Um, it's possible I was just really dumb at the moment. That does happen. But I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't find more than one. But I'm sure I will find something to make with this. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. It reminds me very much of the yarn that I used to make my first triangle shawl that I ever made, the, the orange and purple one. Except that this one's definitely a heavier weight. So I know that there's like a, a ratio that you know when you get so many meters and so many grams that you can figure it out. But to me, like this looks like a worsted weight yarn. It's about that size anyway. Um, so yeah, so it says Merino Extra Fine Super Wash. Oh, I wouldn't say it's super fine. Maybe it's just the, is it maybe just the, the um, fibers themselves that are super fine? I don't know. And they must sell this in a lot of countries. Oh, made in Italy. Oh, again. Oh, this is, this is odd. Okay, so do you remember that sock yarn that I bought last time that I showed you? It was made in Italy and it had German label. And this is the same thing. Crazy. Is that like a thing? Is that yarn gets made in Italy and then they sell it in Germany? That's, I don't know. I'm not used to that. I was telling the lady at the yarn store too, is that I'm trying to break away from so much acrylic yarn and it's acrylic yarn a hundred percent has its place and I don't judge anybody for using acrylic yarn, but I also want to improve my own skill set by using different fibers that require different um, techniques and different care instructions and things like that. Just so if somebody ever comes to me and says, hey, can you make me something with blah, 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 then I at least have some knowledge to go ahead and work on that. Oh, I also, I also really, really liked this on the label is that, and if it didn't focus, I do apologize. I'm running a bit blind here. It's sheep friendly, no musing. So I'm not gonna get into musing. I don't like it. And that's one reason why I have stayed away from yarn is because if it doesn't say that it doesn't, I assume that it does, or the, the yarn is being mules, I think. Um, and then again, with I'm not familiar with German or Italian really at all, unfortunately. So it's hard for me really to figure out um, how, how these things are made. Um, and again, like I, I really try to do my best and I'm not going to be perfect hundred percent of the time, but I have to do the best that I can with the information I have at the time. But I like that. If you want to look up what musing is, um, do so at your own risk. It is not for the faint of heart. And I definitely regretted it the day that I looked it up, but I am glad that I know because now when I know better, I can do better, which again, with acrylic, you don't have to worry about musing, but I mean, nothing is perfect, right? Like there's no perfect system, but all this to be said is that I would like to move to some more natural fibers in my repertoire and you know this merino and all of that stuff is a good place to start and I like that this one's no musing and hopefully this one is still in production because it was on sale so I don't know if it's maybe the company's not around anymore I don't know but I haven't used it at all obviously because it still has the band on it and everything but it is really pretty it feels really soft it doesn't smell like anything yeah, it smells like nothing, just like fresh air. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this, but I'll make something. The second, I got more of this sock yarn because, because 
It was BOGO, so I did. Uh, this one, it's that same as last time, and this one, it doesn't say no mule zing, so I'm assuming it does, they do use mule zing. I don't, it's, I don't think that it's like a regulated thing, so I don't know if you actually have to say that you do or don't, if you do or don't. Um, it is the same brand as the one from last time. Um, the number is 947 on here. Oh, right, this is the, the Fabre, um, and then the Fertie is 57054 which is different than the other colors that I use. Um, that was 944 and 946, something like that. They were even numbers, that's all I remember, the orange ones. Well, then I made the toque and then I have the other balls. I got two of these again for the same reasons I got two last time because I would like to make socks with these and I don't know how far a single ball of yarn will go for socks when it's intended for knitting socks. Even though this will get two knitted socks apparently, I don't know, and again, I'm worried. I love tall socks. I like turquoise a lot, and I really like the gray and the turquoise and the blue that are all juxtaposed together with the turquoise, or I guess you could call it teal, but I just, I thought it was really pretty, and it reminds me um, of Waterton Parks, or Waterton National Park in Alberta, and part of it goes into uh, Montana. Um, but it's gray, like the gray reminds me so much of the mountains, and then the the purpley blue in here that's like the sky and the turquoise is when you get a clear day and it's always windy there um the water is just such a beautiful color it's not quite like that that one's more like moraine lake maybe this would be this one doesn't remind me of moraine lake moraine lake is honest to goodness it is this color the water is that color 24 hours or 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 absolutely stunning if you've never been to moraine lake and you have the opportunity to do so please go or to Lake Louise. Absolutely stunning, beautiful. In the middle of the winter, you can skate there. I guess it's not 365. It's whenever it's defrosted anyway. Um, but anyway, this one does not remind me of, it doesn't remind me of Moraine Lake and it doesn't remind me of Lake Louise. It reminds me of Waterton Park. I don't know, it's funny. Like I get so many of these and it reminds me of places that I've been. This one, I'm not sure what it reminds me of other than my other scarf, this one that I just got. Um, Someplace fun with fireworks. Canada Day, maybe? In a way. I'm not sure. I just, this evokes a sense of comfort and coziness to me and of huga, I think, is what it is. Like, not Christmas. I would say, like, this looks like November to me. Just because we're leaving certain things and we're entering another season and it's kind of, it's kind of a weird time in Alberta, November is, at least in southern Alberta. In northern Alberta, you guys have snow already, but yeah, I don't know. It just, a fireplace, I'm not sure. It just, it, it looks, yeah, it just, it looks happy to me. I just, I'm like quiet happy. Like reading a book in front of the fireplace. That's what this looks like to me. And this one looks like summer. Summer at the lake, for sure which I feel like that's not, I don't need to explain any lake, really. And you got grass around and trees. That is all I have for you this week. So I, I'm hoping to get the sweater finished and the wrap finished so I can show you guys that next week as finished projects. And then I, it will free up time for me to um, work on the duvet cover, although I might shelve that. I, it has been the most glorious couple of days. We had a snow that melted like within an hour. Um, and this week is just, I can't, like, I can't even, it's so ugly outside. Otherwise I would show you everything is brown. It's kind of dead. We have the grass is brown still. Nothing looks very nice, but I feel like in my bones and in my soul, I feel it's time to be outside. So the big projects I'm going, <sighs> I'm gonna have to do some changing, I think. So let me take, I'm gonna work on the duvet cover. I'm gonna take that back. I'm probably not gonna work on that until next autumn. Um, I am going, so yeah, when I finish those two, the next thing I am making myself finish is the pink, white, and blue wrap cardigan. And then I will take my duvet and fold it up and put it into the storage. And then I'm gonna take out Oh, what do I have for little things? I'm probably going to bring out actually that uh, top that I was making that has the dragonflies on it because that'll be perfect for summertime and to test drive that. 
And then I also wanted to make a skirt or like a bum wrap. I'm not, not a skirt exactly, like one that you wear with tights. So like springtime with um, like leggings or something like that or shorts underneath, something like that. Um, I don't know. I feel a little bit all over the place actually right now. Uh, I don't know. I, I need to just like get through these things first and then I can plan a little bit better. And also if we're going to be traveling, which despite the cost of gas, we still plan on going camping. Um, I need things that are portable and small. Duvet cover is not small or portable. So that it'll definitely change how and what I'm making coming up. So in, also going along with my illness that I have, I feel like, I honestly, I feel fine. Yesterday, I did not feel that great. I had a lot of post-nasal drip and my nose was really running. So I've been using my handkerchiefs Yes, I, I'm a handkerchief user. I apologize if that grosses you out. No, you know what? I don't apologize. Not sorry. Um, I understand some people find it gross. I don't. Uh, mucus is water soluble, so they just go in the washing machine and they get clean. And then I iron them and they're good. Except I didn't iron this last batch. Last batch. That's hard to say. Um, so the ends of them, it, it's um, it's got a bunch of stitching like that's decorative that goes like that. And that has gone accordion like because I didn't iron them. So yeah, I am that guy. I iron my hankies. I'm an old man at heart, I guess. Last night I had a really good sleep, which is awesome. Um, I'm typically not, I used to be a great sleeper. I could sleep anywhere, I could sleep anytime. And then, was it probably about five years ago, I really started getting insomnia. So it started out, trust me, this has a point, just let's bear with me for a little bit. It would start out that I could fall asleep, but I couldn't stay asleep. And I, it wouldn't matter what time I went to bed. It would be between 2.30 and 3 o'clock and I'd be bang, I'd be awake and I'd be awake for the day. And there were a few days that, oh gosh, let me think. There was, there was one time I just, I couldn't sleep. So I got up and I, I know you're not supposed to do it, but I was really desperate at the time. And I came and I watched TV and then I worked the next day. So I was up from like three that morning before all day till three o'clock again. And then I worked and then finally I was able to fall asleep that night. Um, and now, now it's gotten to the point where I really have a hard time falling asleep and I cannot, I can't seem to get myself into any kind of REM or deep sleep. It's very, very surface level. Like, like I, and again, it's hard to explain this. I am aware that I'm dreaming because I'll, I'll be think, I think as I fall asleep, as we all do, and then my thoughts kind of start getting helter skelter and they don't really make sense. And then I'm like, okay, like I'm, I'm sleeping now, but I'm cognizant enough to know that I'm sleeping, but I can't like move around a whole bunch and I can hear like external stimuli, but I don't respond to it the same way. So if like my kids ask me a question, like they'll get the, mm, and that's it. Like I can't actually, I can't actually answer them. I have to go through the waking up process. I promise, promise. I know this is a boring story. Um, so now, yeah, so now I can't fall asleep. So I take medication to sleep. I have since uh, 2019, January 2019, because my not sleeping had gotten so bad that I ended up having kind of a mental breakdown, burnout thing. And I ended up in the short term mental health um, unit, actually on Bell Let's Talk day, um, I went in because it was not, it was just not a good time. So I haven't given any like warning and another day I will warn everyone at the beginning of the video that I can discuss this further. Um, it's just, it was an upsetting time and I sort of need to prepare and other people need to prepare in case they don't want to listen to it, all of that stuff. Anyway, so I ended up there and I was diagnosed with anxiety. I have high functioning anxiety. And uh, so I, yeah, and it's not, I've taken, so I take medication to help with the anxiety. I take medication because I don't sleep. And I also have done, I've done counseling and I've done dyclectic behavior therapy, DBT, which that was, that actually was the most helpful thing for me was doing that because it taught me how to, it taught me how to stop myself, which I know sounds kind of crazy. But it's like when when you start like getting into those like destructive, destructive is not the right word. The like when you start ruminating, that's what I would call it is ruminating. It helps me snap out of it and 
um, engage my behavior and thoughts and actions in a more appropriate, um, conclusive way rather than just like doing something to alleviate the anxiety. So um, I don't have obsessive compulsive disorder, but I like not diagnosed. I don't think I don't check very many of the boxes actually to be diagnosed for it. I tend to have some low grade tendencies though when I am very stressed out because um, really strange things from an outside and uh, different perspective is that I become like I become obsessed with the house being clean. Um, for no, like it's for literally no reason. And it's not that I'm up in the middle of the night cleaning, but hoarding, like hoarding is very scary to me. So, um, I worry it's, I, I've talked about this before. I'm pretty sure anyway, but I, in my mind, I'm very concerned that because I'm not in a specific room that because I'm not there, it's hoarded now, like it's full to the ceiling. And I, I know objectively that that's not a healthy way to behave and it's not true. Um, but then, you know, like I go through and I, I will throw a lot of things out that we do actually use and, you know, clean everything, make sure there's no dust and our house right now, like it is dusty right now. Don't get me wrong. So I can see that. Um, and it, it, I don't like it. It does bother me very low grade, but I'm not, I'm not avoiding dealing with the anxiety by cleaning it. Like I know I have to clean it. It's part of my routine for the day is that I go around and I dust um, every day just because we have a very dusty house with my husband working with paint and wood and things like that. Um, I know it sounds obsessive to dust every day, but just trust me, I, I have to do it every day because otherwise it's this thick at the end of the week. That's hyperbole. Bear with me. And I vacuum a lot because same thing, dust all over the place. And it's just to help. I need order as well to sort of keep going so I but I have to be very careful I can't let myself get to the sort of obsessive part where I am avoiding like I won't I won't eat I won't exercise I won't take care of the animals I do like very cursory like other person care like I will do the laundry and feed the kids and things like that but um I like I get very much tunnel vision and I know that I'm stressed out about something and I have to stop and take a step back and I have to assess why I might be having an anxiety response instead of just trying to alleviate it. So that's what it all taught me. I'm not sure that you guys at all wanted to hear about my mental health at all, but I am not shy about it. When it first happened, absolutely, I didn't want anybody to know. But now um, I would like my story to be able to help other people if that's at all possible. And it's not that I think that I'm so special or I'm the only one who has ever gone through anything like this. Not at all. It's just that I feel the more voices that can um, lend it, lend themselves to not the cause, but because it's not, it's not a cause, but I just, I want to make it an open discussion. And I feel that having people demonstrate their openness about their mental health struggles, regardless of what it is, is it's beneficial to so many people and I don't say it to scare people either. And I also, I, if you're in the throes of a mental health crisis, it's really, really easy to find, um, the catastrophizers. And I, like, I was a catastrophizer for sure. Um, and I just, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to explain. It's hard to explain like with hindsight, how it is, because I'm like, I have, not rationalize the behavior, but I can recognize what was going on at the time and how it affected like myself and other people. But in the moment, I know that I felt very, very differently. Um, like I felt like I was fixing things, but I'm like objectively now, three years later, like I was not fixing anything. Like my life was burning around, burning down around me and I was quite happy to sit in it. So I apologize for that tangent. What I was getting at at the very beginning, which I promise this is the point of this. So I had a good sleep last night. I unfortunately had such a good sleep that it hurt my trap because I stayed in the same position for so long that now it's kinked. And I was trying to work out today and I was doing some pull downs, which that was okay. And then we moved on to this. That was not okay. Even just doing this and lifting it up now, I can feel it. So I had my traps injured. This was probably five years ago. 
no, maybe four, probably four years ago. I totaled my vehicle, unfortunately, while it happened. But yeah, I turned, I turned unsafely and was in a collision and the seat belt hurt my trap. So I was like this for a few days. But um, yeah, so now every once in a while, if I have a really good sleep or if I don't move around enough in the night, they hurt. Usually it's this one, but today it is this guy. And I will tell you, traps are notoriously hard to stretch out. Like they just, cause they are, they shape like this. So they don't, and um, there's another muscle that's near the bottom part of this that goes like that. That one is easy to stretch because if I hang on to my big toes and then I pull myself like this, that will stretch that and it'll stretch across my shoulders. And it will a little bit on my traps too, but I almost, I don't know, I find like the weirdest ways to like get in there and fix it. And sometimes, sometimes he gives Dr. Hose and my arm goes like that. It's fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day and let me know what you are working on in the comments below. I love to hear what you're working on. Thank you so much for joining me today. Stay bright, stay beautiful and follow your vagabond heart. Bye.